North Carolina Republican Governor Pat McCrory. First of all, Governor McCrory, welcome to the Cutler Report. We appreciate it, sir. Thank you, Larry. It's great to be on your show. All right. Now, as I understand it, uh, you took down the unemployment benefits, or you gradually reduced them, and you actually met with greater success. I guess if you provide an incentive to work, more people will work. Tell us about your plan, because I don't think President Obama understands it. Well, my first goal was to pay off our debt. When I came into office about a year ago last week, North Carolina businesses owed the federal government $2.5 billion uh, for unemployment compensation. I mean, we were living off of a credit card. In fact, we were only paying the interest on the debt with no principal whatsoever. And we were having to increase taxes just to pay that interest on this $2.5 billion that we owed federal government. So one decision I had to make is we got to cut up the credit card that we owe to the federal government. And another thing was that we had the 10th highest unemployment compensation in the country, or the ninth or 10th largest or highest. And uh, that was putting us in this debt. And I needed to encourage people to get on uh, private sector payrolls, not stay on unemployment. So we made a very difficult decision. And uh, one of my predictions when I made this decision with my cabinet and with the legislature was we'd start seeing unemployment drop in the October, November, December time period, and it has. And we've had one of the largest drops in the United States. So you basically didn't want to go back to Uncle Sam because if you bet back for more unemployment benefits, you'd be deeper in debt. And also, do you believe in the incentive model? In other words, you, we've had these unemployment benefits now for five years. I think we've had the 9, 10. This would be a, the 11th pass at it. Um, it really doesn't seem to have worked very much. Maybe some places better than others. But the point I'm asking you is, are you selling the incentive effect? That is to say, if people know that they've got to go out and get a job and that the benefit story is shrinking, they will go out and work harder, look harder, and if need be, take a lower wage, but getting back to work will happen faster. Employers told me time and time again throughout North Carolina that some people were turning down open jobs because of continued unemployment right. extensions. And no doubts. I, I got that feedback time in and time again. I mean, constantly. And uh, it's becoming a discouragement in some job markets for people, especially uh, entering entry level jobs. And that was unfair to the employers, and it was unfair to the taxpayers of North Carolina. And uh, we had to stop that practice. And we also, frankly, had to be competitive with our uh, neighboring states, South Carolina, Virginia, and Tennessee's. Uh, unemployment compensation was much lower than North Carolina, so I was losing the unemployment or the employment wars to my neighboring state, and uh, now we're uh, not only catching them, we might uh, exceed them pretty soon All right. uh, in creating jobs for North Carolina. Did, did President Obama consult with you about this so-called manufacturing hub in Raleigh? Uh, he consulted with uh, North Carolina State University about the hub, and I'm a big proponent of manufacturing because uh, if we continue to live on government jobs and service jobs, the long-term economic model won't work in our, the United States or in North Carolina. And I'm a big proponent of, for example, our tax reform that I initiated this year as governor is rewarding those companies that build things and make things and grow things and produce things. Our economy cannot live off the service industry or government jobs alone, and that's what's been happening for the past decade, and that's got to end. We've got to get back to making things and competing did, against China. Did you lower tax rates? Did you lower individual and business Ab tax rates? Absolutely. Uh, it's one of the first things we did, and it was... Uh, we had one of the highest corporate tax rates and the highest income tax rates in the southeast, and North Carolina was becoming non-competitive. We're competitive again, and we're already recruiting new jobs and growing jobs. We had one of the largest drops in unemployment in the nation in the last two months, I think partially due to these tough decisions that we were willing to make in the past year. We were in a crisis in North Carolina. We had the fifth highest unemployment rate in the country, and that was unacceptable. Now we're not even in the top 25. That's dramatic uh, improvement, and uh, it was due to making some tough decisions, and I've had a few protesters uh, against it, but uh, I'm in it for the long term and for people to get back on the job rolls in North Carolina. All right, let's go national for the last couple seconds. The State of the Union message is coming up. We heard President Obama yesterday at a, a brief press conference with his cabinet that, um, you know, no one's going to be left behind. He wants to be fair. 
Governor, I think there's an inequality argument coming rather than a growth argument, okay? And I think this has become a national meme for the whole Democratic Party. I noticed, by the way, Kay Hagan wasn't even there today. So she may be running from Obama, Obamanomics, and Obama's health care plan. But to get back to this, look, um, up here in New York, Mayor Bill de Blasio, he wants to tax rich people in order somehow to make life fairer and uh, create less inequality. Uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren up in uh, Massachusetts has made the case. Lesser Democrats have made the case. I believe Obama is going to make the case. I call it the Sandinista wing of the uh, Democratic Party in honor of Mayor de Blasio, who spent a lot of time in Nicaragua. What's your take on this? What's your expectation? Are we going to have inequality from Obama, or is he going to have a growth? message. Are we going to have an opportunity from Obama or is he going to have redistribution? How do you see this? Well, I plan to set up an economic development office maybe in New York if uh, New York City is planning <laughs> to do what the new mayor plans to do because I think it's a great uh, ground for me to steal business from New York and move down to North Carolina where we'll have a lower income tax, a lower corporate tax and a, and a better quality of life. Uh, so I'm in I'm in the business of competing against my fellow governors and competing against the rest of the world. And, of course, my biggest issue right now is dealing with the uh, Obamacare or National Health Care Act, where uh, we are having issues with the current medical system, but we've only made it worse by trying other types of distribution. We've created a more serious problem by trying to correct a problem, and it's a bad solution. And we better correct it for, uh, fast because uh, we've, we still do not know the real ramifications of Obamacare on business and on also state government. And that's got to be freezing long-term business decisions. It just has to be. That's what the there great, is no great article in the Wall Street Journal today uh, by the uh, president of AT&T for the Business Roundtable. Uncertainty is stopping businesses from making long-term investments. Let me just ask you this. You've had a Republican revolution in North Carolina. Governor, both houses, and legislature, Mitt Romney carried the state and so on and so on. Um, it sounds to me like you're selling the growth message, and I want to ask you if that is working, growth and opportunity. Again, I think there's a contrast between that and this inequality leveling, you know, uh, uh, equality of results message, which I think is not the American tradition. Equality of opportunity is the American uh, tradition. Where do you come out on it? I've got to encourage investment, private sector investment. And I've got counties in North Carolina where the largest employer is government or a hospital. And our economic model in, our, in the United States and in North Carolina won't work if government is the largest employer. I've got to incentivize the private sector to unleash their resources and grow and invest. Mm -hmm. And that's what our tax code is now doing. It's rewarding investment, rewarding productivity, and uh, rewarding making money because that money then is reinvested into our inf infrastructure, into our education. Uh, growth is the best way out of a recession. And uh, I think that's my, that's my philosophy as governor. And I've had to step on some toes in my first year in office to make this happen. And uh, I've had protesters like uh, Scott Walker had protesters in Wisconsin, not quite to that volume, who were opposed to my. Uh, decisions on unemployment, on Medicaid reform, on Medicaid exp expansion. You should be honored. Um, you should be honored. I had to, I had to think long term, uh, not just short term till the next election. And those, already the results are seeing ben uh, benefits to people seeking jobs in North Carolina. Those protesters are an honor, a testimony to your effectiveness <laughs> because they believe you're going to carry through with this uh, Reagan-esque incentive-oriented growth model. Anyway, I'm not going to keep you. North Carolina Governor Pat McCrory, congratulations, all the best of luck, and thanks for helping us this evening.